All righty, gents. What's the difference between Quicksilver and the Flash? Mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know. What is it? Only one of them can catch a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Oh, oh man. Oh. Uh, Apropos. <laughs> I like it. Uh, oh man. Hence, hence the uh, actor swap. <laughs> Very timely. Uh, or, or the recast as it as the recast. It, as it the recast, yeah. Love oh it. Gosh. Well guys, we're trying to make these jokes worse every week. I don't know if you found that. <laughs> um it, it entertains I feel sure us. They have. And Give it a if, like if it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. click the and click That's the subscribe button. Bad. And turn on notifications for more bad jokes. Hello, uh, hello, hello. Welcome back to the show that just keeps on giving the real heroes <laughs> show. <laughs> Um, in today's episode, uh, myself, Kevin, and Nick are going to talk about our theories uh, for the next episode of WandaVision, which is going to be episode six, uh, based off of some of the things that we learned in episode five. So uh, we're going to each share one theory, like we tend to do in these videos, and then we're going to discuss it. So uh, Nick, I'm going to let you lead this one off. I think you had some some stuff about Monica Rambeau that you wanted to, to talk about. Yeah, just to piggyback off of my uh, theory from last week about who she's ultimately becoming in the MCU. Um, you know, we got the Easter egg from her mother being Photon. So when she was getting uh, scanned and, and with the, her blood and the MRI uh, in the beginning of this episode, it's just a bright light, you know, and they're like, oh, we need to run more tests. And she's like, I don't think so. I'm out. You know, uh, it's it's very apparent because uh, I think Darcy was even like, hey, it's blank. And it's like, yes, yes, it is. And that <laughs> means something uh, that she is inheriting uh, superpowers to become. I don't. And again, I don't know if she's going to go after her to uh, use her mother's name or, you know, uh, Photon as her powered name i guess or if she's off gonna become captain marvel 2 oh we're uh, using our made up names i'm spider-man yes. then <laughs> yeah <laughs> doctor strange um i i think here's what's gonna happen uh i think based on her little um uh, shade that she threw at captain marvel when darcy agent Wu, and and monica were, were on the table uh, and I like the fact that Monica was like, Wanda would have one v one her if he hadn't called in the blitz, like a little bitch. Yeah. And then Agent Agent was like, Well, I don't know. I think Captain Marvel uh, almost had her. And then like they kind of hint, or Darcy says, What well, didn't Captain Marvel get her abilities from? Uh, uh, was it the the same stone? Wasn't it? Yeah, the, the same stone. The, the Tesseract. Right. So. Yeah. It's like you'd think that their powers would be equal, but I, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that Scarlet Witch Wanda is the is the number number one numero uno uh, strongest strongest Avenger. <laughs> um, sorry, Thor. <laughs> sorry, Thor. He's he's probably number two at this point, unless they do like Rune God Thor. But uh, we'll say that. Uh, dude, the future, I think they might they might go there. I, I was think watching they might some be. stuff, and I they think they're to. heading in that direction. But anyway, but, go ahead. But here's what I think they're leading up to. So Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, uh, she's gonna lose her powers via Rogue. Rogue's gonna take her powers. Carol Danvers is gonna end up in a coma. And not know what the fuck just happened. Wow. That... And and then that's where Monica Rambeau steps in as the new Captain Marvel, or rather Photon, or or, or Pulsar, mm. or Spectrum, whatever they're gonna do. That is a bold um, prediction. But I think that's how. That's I feel how like Nick rogue just went rogue. Into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just I just went straight from the comics. That's all I did. But yeah, I, I, no. I think if they're if if, the, if that's their plan, if that's what they're doing, especially if that's what they're showing us from WandaVision then that's great because you know that was kind of like one of my quarrels about um or my qualms rather with uh with uh, captain marvel movie uh i didn't like what they what they really did to paint up monica like monica never looked up to her uh, monica never looked up to captain marvel so 
I just, I was like, I don't know why they did that. We'll see what happens. Now we know what happens. That's why the shade was thrown. So I'm kind of wondering what's going to happen. I wonder if they'll actually end up fighting uh, too in Captain so, Marvel too. But great point because who does look up to Captain Marvel is Miss Marvel. Yep. And Miss Marvel is also going to be in Captain Marvel too. Yep. Yeah. And I think she's going to be real conflicted when Monica and Carol are button heads. Yep. Yeah, it's man. I'm excited for that movie. And if that's like a secret invasion ties into that too, oh, Dude, I, after this last episode, I'm excited for every Ooh. single thing coming down, boy, coming coming down from the MCU in every way, shape, and form. It's all building into something that is way bigger than the Infinity Gauntlet. Like it's, Secret Wars, it's gonna yeah. happen. They have to do it. Oh. Yeah, there's there's a lot that they could do and and sort of fix because I, I think a lot of pe- a lot of problems that people have is like things aren't aren't uh, like the continuity is all sort of a little bit of a mess because of 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 the studios that own the rights. Like I don't necessarily think it's Feige's fault for choosing certain directions, uh, or but but because it's like hey you you have you have to do with what you got yep. and and it's like they didn't have access to the fantastic four you know every single mutant out there you know other big names like silver surfer and stuff like that so you you can yeah. you couldn't do a lot of the things it's like like the avengers had many other characters that were involved but the, you couldn't include them so it's like here's what we got to do this is where we're going now but hey look we just included evan peters as quicksilver as pietro so like we're floodgates are open we're starting to do this and it means a lot for for the sake of what's coming for us and it's it's like that's exciting because like we could get every single character we actually wanted in in uh this like cohesive structure with the mcu that we we knew it yeah so well, the other thing that people forget is that um, it's really, really difficult to bring 80 years worth of stories to the screen in just a few a few years. You know, yeah. so it's it's like you can't. I mean, this is something where you had an a, an issue a month, every month, sometimes multiples because they went oh, yeah. in different directions. They had spinoffs, they had crossovers, all this kind of stuff. You have like 80 years of this rich content to distill down into this one set of films, you know? And yeah, yeah you're right. That it, It's not always in the right order and it's not always the exact right people at the exact right time. Yeah. But it was honestly probably the best they could have done given <laughs> what they had to work with, which was right. a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's as someone who collected a lot of comics over my lifetime. I mean, it's it's insane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, absolutely. How much content is out there. So you, they, they pick and choose. And, and again, not everyone is going to like what they what they what they pick to put on the on the on the big screen or, or yeah. TV screen. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I like what they're doing right now with WandaVision. So yeah. 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 for, for that much, I'm happy. And um, but yeah, I think Monica, like, she's gonna be a big uh a big part of of the mcu moving forward so um i think she's going to be an ally of of wanda's i I think they i don't think a team up or or some kind of connection help she helped deliver her babies man like that yeah something there you know (laughs) there's something there and you know she talked her off the ledge too in this last episode yes yeah you know. so so she obviously has some some respect for her and like she like monica said you've been inside my head you knew how yep. it was the whole fucking time yep and you could have got rid of me at any moment but yep. you didn't so yep. right, kevin let's... to your point before we close up on that um the whole thing about comics every week or comics every month the mcu from iron man to endgame was what 23 movies i think they said something like that yeah so on average, two to two and a half hours per movie, you're looking at probably roughly about 50 hours worth of content. This year alone, with live action Disney Plus shows, you're getting about 30 hours worth of content because there's five Crazy. of them. And each one is based off of a six hour structure. Yeah. So they're going to start leaning into that model, I think, a lot more. And I think you're going to see Marvel Studios operate uh, a whole lot more like a comic book studio mixed with a movie studio if that makes sense yeah, yeah. unless sure. like a movie studio that's adapting stuff into two-hour movies if they can yeah and you sure. you can see that 
tendency, even just with certain smaller creative decisions like them arguing through the credits yeah. of this last one. That's <laughs> a real yeah. comic book thing to do. It you is. Know? Um, right. it's, it's a real Deadpool-y kind of thing Get to do. Get weird. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Kevin, what is your theory, sir? All right, so I, I've got a big theory that I hey. really hope is accurate. <laughs> dirty, dirty man, you. <laughs> um, so here, here's what I think. We have heard the term CMBR several times now, yeah. uh, the cosmic back, background radiation, um, the the residual energy that was, or uh, radiation that was left over from the Big Bang, right? Um, this is something that permeates the entire universe, and there's there should be traces of it everywhere, right? Because Big Bang happens, boom, everything goes out, there should be background radiation all over the place. Um, they have made a point to mention it, not just like in passing, but actually to talk about it multiple times in, in so much as to say that the hex or the bubble that they're, that they're inside of is kind of being generated by cosmic background radiation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's this cosmic radiation that is, that is keeping everything inside the bubble that is helping, uh, Wanda's powers to not spill outside of it. Um, or whoever's powers it is that is, you know, going on inside of there, whatever it's, whatever it is, this radiation is obviously insulating it, right? Uh, not only from outside in, but from inside out. Um, it is also allowing, I think, um, you know, Wanda's powers to, um, to develop a little bit and maybe even to be amplified, uh, because like they mentioned in, in this episode, the Kevlar vest that Monica wore into the hex got changed into those right. funky 70s pants uh -huh. and she wore them back out. Right. It wasn't a, a, something that she got from in there from a thrift, stop, a thrift store or something like that. Sure. And it wasn't something that just got conjured. It is a physical thing that got changed, right? So, yeah. so this background radiation, I think, also got amplified when... Wanda got pissed off because uh, you see it right when she goes back into the bubble and she does something to it and it, it starts to turn red right and it's right. starting to look more and more angry maybe even hellscape kind Devil. of thing uh-huh um, but I believe that the more she does inside that bubble the more CMBR is needed oh. to insulate it and to keep it separate and at some point I think that the the massive amount of CMBR that is there is actually what is going to collapse the multiverse. Um, so we're already hearing things about Spider-Man, right? Yeah. We know that there are characters in in this Sony version of Spider-Man that were in some of the other versions of Spider-Man. Um, there's even. Uh, I guess rumors. I don't know if it's been confirmed or whatever that Willem Dafoe was spotted on set recently. Yeah. Um, I hope they're true. God, I hope dude, they're true. I do yeah, too. I, I do too. I love so, him. <laughs> and then in this uh, this week's episode, we get Quicksilver from the X Men movies. Yep. Right. He knows her. This is not a what the hell am I doing here type of thing. This to me feels like two universes clashing like hmm. you know crashing together so in the universe where quicksilver that quicksilver evan evan peters is that his name yeah um, yeah in in the his universe he wasn't made out of a test tube his father was magneto mm -hmm. right so even though we don't hear wanda mentioned in those x-men movies um, the fact that they are twins and the fact that he's acknowledging her as his sister means that in that universe, Magneto was also her father. So if you also pair that, <laughs> there's a lot of so's and ifs here, but if you also pair that with what Elizabeth Olsen said about some big cameo that was on the level of Luke Skywalker <laughs> happening this season, um, there's only a few people that I could think of that would that be that big. Right. Yeah, I think this is where we see Magneto. I think this is how oh. we get Magneto. Yeah, it's and see, I this, think this that is, is this is my heart right now. Yeah, hey, Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely one of the one of the uh, 
the England uh, sirs. It's either Sir Ian McKellen or Sir Patrick Stewart. One or the other, One right? The two, yeah. But it would stand to reason that since Magneto is important to the twins yes. in that in that universe, that we would get to see him. We may get to see both. Um, you're that you one rarely appears without the other one anyway. So, yeah. um, you know, we, we may get to see both of them, but regardless, I think this is where the X-Men come in. The mutants come in. Fuck Deadpool may come in. Um, oh, the, no, for sure. The yeah. same, you yeah. know, um, I mean, he has to come in at some point that's been confirmed, yeah. but yeah, but he I've lives been in that the bell same that universe, right? He's showing up before his movie. Oh I yeah, think, I, I, I yeah. think he has. He's, 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 a, he's a cameo, and then somewhere, yeah, yeah, for sure. right. But we see the the characters from Days of Future Past in Deadpool too, just for a second. But we see them there, right? Um, and Quicksilver is one of those guys. He is. Yep. So Quicksilver is in Deadpool's universe. So you know what I'm saying? Like this is. I think oh, yeah. this is how we get all of that shit pulled over into this universe well, and it spills uh, over into spider-man well, i don't think it stops there though right like we're getting charlie cox in in spider-man 3 so it's even just every single outside source that disney didn't even have access to that now they do that hey we're throwing this together because we have to yeah absolutely and but i mean like charlie cox and and the entire netflix universe really kind of always background was happening in the mcu anyway they referenced things that happened they referenced yeah. new york a couple of times all that kind yeah. of stuff it was kind of inevitable um sure i i absolutely love the fact that they're keeping charlie uh, oh, dude. as as you daredevil got, that's fantastic to. um but the other thing is and and this is kind of just an offshoot of the theory and it has to do with part of what we touched on in the last video too but when uh, Monica says in this this episode, I know a brilliant aerospace engineer that can probably help with that. So obviously our heads go towards Reed Richards, right? But when she starts to text, if you look on the board behind her, there is a four drawn on the whiteboard. Is there really? Yes. Ah, it's shit. There, there's a fucking four in the like the lower right hand corner of the whiteboard. Easter um, Right? And, and what is it that turns reed and his peeps into the fantastic four if not cosmic fucking radiation right it's uh, like yep this is all kind of going together in my head and i think this cmbr is actually going to be the um the vehicle that they use to kind of smash everything together and give us what we've been waiting for speaking of smashing smash that yep. like button if you just enjoyed kevin's theory <laughs> man that was that was good you guys yeah. were very long. You, everybody here gets a bonus <laughs> long episode because we're like almost at our time and we're only two thirds of the way through. But um, I'm going to try my best to be as coherent as possible about this one because eh, it, it's been running through my brain and it's been hard to, to keep it on track. So uh, we find out in this episode that Scarlet Witch infiltrates Sword and finds Vision's corpse and takes it to Westview to reanimate him, right? Right. Vision died five years ago, and he died on Wakanda, which means that at some point during that five-year period, S.W.O.R.D. got a hold of his corpse and started doing God knows what with it. Right. Uh, Vision's body is made out of vibranium, mm -hmm. right? Captain America's shield is also made out of vibranium. Vibranium comes from Wakanda, strongest alloy on, it. Yeah. on Earth, right? Um, so, the guy that made Captain America's shield back in the day in the comics had success with it, and he tried to forge vibranium with steel. And when he did that, he created adamantium. Sword which right now is the sentient weapon observation and response division used to have the word creation in its title. Yep. Sword started the weapon X program and it's going to be the introduction to Wolverine into the Marvel cinematic universe. And that is my theory. Discuss. Okay. <laughs> well, so it's a stretch, but I mean, in listen. the last episode though, when Monica is being reintroduced to sword 
and he tells her um, this is what's going on. The director tells her, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. She says, the sword says observation, doesn't say anything about creation, which is a throwback exactly to what you're talking about right now. So I don't think that maybe you're that far off the mark. Yeah, I, I think it's a that could be a, a very uh, probable way of, of doing it and, and including uh, Wolverine, you know, like, and, I, and again, I, I don't think it's going to be the same as it was in the comics. Right. And, which is fine you know as somebody who has wolverine permanently tattooed on their leg <laughs> like i understand if and it, like from this point you know the the complete origin story might not mimic the comic books but at the same time it, as long as you do the character justice in my book um i'll be happy with it of course whenever they do that i'm i'm probably going to be one of the most super critical people on the planet about that um so <laughs> we'll see but i think that's a very like it's like you know a very possible way of, of doing it which yeah I, I will submit my resume to marvel studios <laughs> <laughs> um you know dark horse theory here uh just that occurred to me bonus um, theory here we go yeah we haven't thought about this yet i don't think but what if all of this was actually already planned by sword and this was all an experiment on Wanda from the from the get go, uh, because they're aware of certain things, and they wanted to get more powerful mutants out of her, you know. So this this could be it could have been more like Mephisto made a deal with Sword or something like that, rather than the director Hayward maybe. Yeah, because we mm. keep thinking that maybe he's dark, so you know maybe he's aware that mutants can exist because they have some sense of these other parallel universes. Um, and they're actually trying to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, I think I think regardless, Mephisto is still behind all this, right? Like, I think I think it's almost safe to say as well as another theory. Uh, Agnes is Agatha. She killed the dog to try and accelerate the kids, right? Uh, she she brought them from babies to five to ten because she was there. Mm -hmm. And also, um, Wanda references it, and she's like, "Oh, she didn't care." So, yeah, because she fucking was a part of it, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, Ralph is Mephisto. Like, I I think that's still a safe bet or a theory to make. But uh, what what sort of pact we don't know yet. With who yeah. we don't know yet. So again, we got questions answered. We got more uh, questions that we and mysteries that we don't have answered. But hopefully, we will in these next four episodes. But. I, yeah, I think Mephisto is definitely still behind us. We're, we're led to believe that it's all Wanda. I don't think it is. No, I don't uh, think it is. Right, like when Norm's like, she's in my head. He never specified who. No, right. And Vision even says, who? She's in my head. She's she's controlling everything. Who? Yeah. There are more than one then, female Vision, characters in the show. Vision was Vision's like, like, ah. Hey, shut, shut the fuck up. Yeah. You're, you're annoying how, me. How do I turn it off? How do I turn it off? <laughs> Hey, I just realized something. Both <laughs> Mephisto and Ralph have a PHF sound in them. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. a clue, Sherlock. He's just working oh. out at the gym down the street, getting buff before his appearance. That's all. <laughs> man. I don't know about you guys, but like, I'm sweating after this theory. <laughs> yeah, man. I I get I get chills yeah. when I talk about these these like possibilities shower. of where we we could go with it. I just want to go work out now. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's it's cool though because we've got all these theories and there's all these things that that could be happening and they don't have to wrap that all up in these four episodes. That's no, the of course not. Of the Marvel yeah. universe is that it's an ongoing property. We've we've got Marvel shows and movies that are literally coming out almost every single week of the year this year and that's not gonna stop anytime soon i kind of feel like they're just uh they're it's a train that just is gonna keep going forever uh, yeah as long as we're around for sure um and it's exciting i have a, I have a feeling that we're not really gonna get maybe a hundred percent concrete answers until dr strange right which is yeah. sometime next year, I think May. Of they this might, year. they might leave us believing that it was all Wanda, and then when Doctor Strange rolls around, pull the curtain back, and you know, I don't know. We'll see. I have another theory that I'm going to save for next week. Okay, so write it down. That's a tease right there, folks. Yeah, yeah tune no, in. I, I, it, it may or may not have to do with the Super Bowl tomorrow if we get some sort of other low key 
sort of not Loki, but low key. Low, low key. <laughs> okay, I was, <laughs> I wasn't sure where you're going with that. Um, although maybe it is Loki trailer. Who knows? Who knows? But... I, I'm excited though. I think we're gonna get at least a Falcon and Winter Soldier one. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully something different. So, but we'll see. You have to tune in next week for the uh, the next city that I have on my plate. Cool. Well, uh, I think it's that's a good enough time for us to get out of here so Nick can go work out and I can go shower because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm gross now from all this theorizing. So uh, again, guys, we'd love to hear your theories. Uh, if you yes. have one, leave one in the comments section below. Uh, as we have gratuitously stated in the last couple of videos, please click that like button, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so that way your doorbell will ring like Wanda's did every time we post a new video. Um, <laughs> you can find us on all of our social media media as you can see on the bottom of the page here below uh and be on the lookout next week as we will be reviewing episode six and theorizing for episode seven eight nine so until next time we will see you in the next video